I had uh, for the playoffs. I actually had an All Canada Cup. I had Toronto going to the the Stanley Cup, and I had uh, actually the Flames going to the Stanley Cup. My question to you here is: uh, Do you think the Flames can achieve a deep run with uh, the new offseason acquisitions? What you don't think? You don't believe in Kevin Rooney? You don't think Kevin Rooney is going to lead us to the promised land? Um, no, I'm He's not. not Louis Erickson, so no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe if you, if only... you sign to Louis, maybe it, it will be a little bit closer here. Oh, no. We talk about Mr. Inevitable. Michael Stone will be signed right before training camp starts, so we'll wait for that. Um, but in, in all seriousness, yeah, and you know what? It's funny. I actually had the exact same cup final. I thought for some reason I put my faith in the Leafs that they were going to finally figure yeah. it out. And and you know what? To be fair, and, and I don't want to, like, I know we poo on the Leafs, but like, to be fair, they they were the better team in that Tampa series for a good chunk of that uh, mm. a good chunk of that first round, and you know in typical Leafs fashion, it collapses in a game seven loss. But yeah. um, for Calgary's sake, yeah, it was uh, it was it was not the not the playoffs that they had hoped or that Daryl Sutter had drawn up or that Brad Living had kind of put together when he made some decent acquisitions uh, at and before the deadline. But going into this year. You know, we talk about losing Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk. Gaudreau walks for nothing. At least Kachuk had the common courtesy to say that he wanted out before hitting uh, hitting UFA, which was nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you get a bit of a haul back. We talked about it before we started recording here. That 2025 first, Cole Schwint, Mackenzie Weger, and uh, Jonathan Huberto, who just signed his eight-year extension, which... I'm sure. I'm sure will be another question down the road oh, here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> um, look, you're not going to replace. Like I, I always said, in like going into this off season, because there was always the speculation, right? Gaudreau's going to walk. Oh, what's going to happen with Kachuk? You never replace those two guys, right? You can't really replace what they brought. But yeah. at the same time, bringing in Jonathan Huberto, who still finished with 115 points probably one of the best setup guys in the league um to play on a line with probably Elias Lindholm who's scored 40 last year and could probably score 50 uh with a guy like Huberto on his wing um yeah it's gonna be interesting I don't know I, it's hard to forecast because like I still think the, I don't think the Flames are done yet um I think there's gonna be I think another top six winger is is should be in the cards I know everybody's linking Calgary to Kadri still, even though I think Kadri's already signed in New York, but Lou is doing what Lou does and just keeps it hush hush. Mm, um, yeah, but it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I don't know because I still think that and 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 the Flames have ten defensemen on one one way contracts right now that um, they probably are gonna want to get rid of a guy like Valamaki or something like that along those lines. So maybe that's in the in the cards to bring in another winger. I don't know. I I, I don't think they're done. Um, I think it's going to be hard to replicate with the team they have right now. Not that they change drastically, but taking out a 115 point player and a hundred point player in Gaudreau and Kachuk and replacing it with, you know, Huberto, who again, not, not scoffing at by any stretch. I'm very happy that that was the return for Kachuk. Um, but you still got to return. You still got to like plug in and backfill other. I don't know. It's tough. Cause I'm still like mentally trying to formulate yeah, it all right yeah. now, but it's fair. Well, I'll get back to you before, like a week before the season starts, and we'll okay, see how that okay. goes. Because the Flames <laughs> will have a much better look at uh, at what's going on in uh, in the rest of their categories. There. Do you think uh, Mangiapane can take a bigger step? A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I'm. Think so uh, too. The thing is, too, a lot of people have him slotted to start on that first line. With people are people are projecting uh, Huberto, Lindholm, and Mangiapane. Um. I don't think that's the case. I don't think they should do that because the Manjapani, Backland, and Coleman line was like pretty lights out for a shutdown, shutdown line last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you mess that dynamic up and you and you switch that around. I understand Manjapani's probably at that level where he can go play on that on that top line and and uh, and succeed. Um, but I'm not breaking that lineup. But I do think he takes an, another step. He took a huge step last year. He scored what 30, 30 37, yeah. three. 35 something like that mm-hmm. um which i mean i don't think a lot of people really projected him to have uh have that good of a year but um yeah i think he can take a bigger step it's it's definitely there he's still uh i think he's still got a little bit to prove um 
I don't think he's going to be on that top line, but I think he's still going to uh, – he's going to have a, himself a whale of a year next year. Okay. What about Connor Zary? Think he slots in somewhere next year? Because that's solid prospect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, Zary is um, – Zary's an interesting one. I don't think he of – the, of the prospects that I think make the jump right away, I don't think Zary's at the top of my list. Um, Jacob Peltier is probably going to be the one who I, I would think – challenges for a spot this year there's uh, there's going to be spots open um the flames still employ milan lucic and sean monahan that combine mm-hmm. for like 11 and a half million dollars <laughs> towards their salary cap to play yeah. in the third and fourth line hey we <laughs> we are the the landfill of bad contracts so I'm hey do you guys saying, want a sean monahan or, i'm just or, saying or milan like monahan and lucic but i want at least that florida first maybe connor zary and give me something else <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Like, and uh, the, not to like segue or, or or get off topic of the of the prospect talk, but so many Flames fans just think it's going to be so easy to flip the Lucic contract and the Monahan contract, and oh, just call up the Coyotes because they're taking on bad contracts left, right, and center. I'm like, yeah, but you got to pay for them. Like, you, yeah. you're not just the the Yotes aren't just taking on bad contracts; they're taking on bad contracts for assets. So it's like. Yep. It, it doesn't, you know, and and and, and um, I think it would be silly to pull a, uh, a Vancouver Canucks and and send the Yotes the last year of bad contracts when they can just be off the books the following <laughs> season. So um, I think they can take a page out of the <laughs> out of the Canucks book and just maybe stay away from that. But uh, back to the con- or to the to the prospects, Connor Zary is definitely close. He was injured a lot last year. He didn't play a whole lot in the AHL, um, but Jacob Pelche showed that he's ready to take the next step. Matthew Phillips has been ready. I just don't think he's a Daryl Sutter guy. He's not big enough, but he's definitely, like, he had one of the best seasons in the AHL last year. Um, so I think there's a couple guys ahead of Connor Zary, but I definitely do think that one of a Stockton graduate will uh, will make the opening uh, opening day roster. All right. Do you think Brad Treeliving saved his job? With with what he managed to get back for Kachuk, where uh, to be fair, I understand it was kind of silly to think they would get nothing back. But when you have a player that's like, I don't want to be here, and you, I'm only going to go to let's just say it's four or five teams that he would he would sign an extension with, mm-hmm. you kind of you put a vice grip around the throat of whatever team because it, hey, you have to move him for one of these teams, or he's not going to go. So most of the other teams aren't going to give good value, or they know that, that it's you know stacked in their favor. Oh, absolutely. And that's kind of like, that was kind of the consensus around Flames Twitter and, and, and the fans and the people I talked to uh, within the organization was like, this was like the best case scenario. Because, you know, you look at the hiring of, of, of Daryl Sutter, he said straight up, he didn't come here to rebuild. He came here to contend. He didn't, he didn't leave his ranch in Viking, Alberta to come to Calgary and coach a rebuilding franchise. Um, so I think that as long as Daryl Sutter was around, Brad had to do whatever he could to make sure this team stayed competitive. Losing Gaudreau for nothing hurts. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, you, you, you got to do something. You got to either trade him or you got to, you know, throw all the back up the Brinks truck or whatever. And, and I, I don't fault Brad because he did everything he could. He offered him eight by 10 and a half. I think they went, they, they said they would have been comfortable going up to 11 to try to keep him. Um, you're not trading him at the dead at last year's deadline when the Flames are competitive as they yeah. are, uh, mm-hmm. and they were in a playoff spot. They won the division. Like it just I, doesn't make sense. I think that like trading away players when you're going for it is always just really dumb. Like I feel like it's always a terrible idea. It, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? Like mm-hmm. like the fans are going to be pissy if you trade them away at the deadline, and you know all of a sudden the Flames don't even they miss the playoffs or whatever. Or damned if you don't, you, you walk him into free agency. He wasn't going to stay. That's the problem. Like, I don't think there was anything that you could have done to try to entice him to stay. His mind was made up that he wanted to go back home. Didn't realize Columbus was that close to Philadelphia, but <laughs> I digress. Um, <laughs> maybe my geography's off, but I, last I heard, it wasn't, uh, wasn't the clo- it's closer than Calgary. But um, you know he wasn't going to stay. There's only so much you can do as a GM when it comes to backing up the Brinks truck. If a guy's got his mindset that he's not going to stay, he's not going to stay. I don't fault Brad for that whatsoever. Yeah. He did what he could. They offered him all the they offered him the big bucks, um, and the guy walked. It's 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 part of the business. It, it happens, you know. Teams it happens to teams uh, 
every now and then, you know, the Islanders, it happened with them with, with Tavares. And, you know, I don't fault John either because I understand that, like, you know, you you earn the right to, to go where you want when you hit UFA. If that's hey. not in Calgary, it's not in Calgary. Hey, think of it this way. At least you're not the Coyotes where somebody wants to walk and you don't even have the money to pay them, okay? So <laughs> <laughs> just just think of it that way. We, we've, we've, that's watched, true. we've watched a plenty of guys walk away, including Kyle Turris and many others. <laughs> so we, we, we know the, the pain, but it's okay. Our redemption arc is coming back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to huff on the copium here. I'm going to say the arena is going to get built. Austin Matthews is going to be digging the shovel into the ground. <laughs> and all the uh, I Toronto, hope so. All the Toronto oh, fans will so. be very angry. 